So we can now start executing. The first instruction to which our program counter points is icons zero. This means we put the value zero on the operand stack. So we write zero in the stack slot here and then we move our stack pointer up one slot and we're done with this instruction so we can move our program pointer to the next instruction. Now this next instruction says I store one. So this instruction takes a int value from the operand stack, this zero here, and it moves that zero over to the local variable table. And of course we need to actually adjust the stack pointer, so we've taken it away from the stack. So that's all iStore1 does. Then we're done with that, we can move to the next instruction, iconst1, so it's getting a bit repetitive, put the 1 on the operand stack and adjust the stack pointer moving 1 up. We're done with iconst1. I store 2 so we take this 1 that we just put on the stack and we move that over to local variable number 2 here and we have to of course adjust our stack pointer. And we're done with iStore2. We move to iLoad2. Ha, ah, okay, we just started, we need to load it back. So load what is in local variable number 2 on the top of our operand stack. Seems kind of pointless, but it's not really. So we're done with iLoad2. We move to the next one. iLoad0. Actually, I made a mistake. When I said I load 2, we're not going to remove anything from here. This value here, this 1, is still in there. So let's not remove that from here. This is still here. Okay. So we are at I load 0. So we're going to take what is in this slot here and load that on the stack. But as you can see, there's nothing. That's because I didn't show you the state at the beginning of this method. This method was called with an argument, with an actual parameter for some 1 to n. That actual parameter is whatever value you pass in to n here. So that value, when you call, was stored and always is stored in the local variable table at the bottom. So in this case, we have only one argument, so here it is. Assume we stored the value 2 here. So we say sum 1 to n of 2. So now we're doing i load 0 and we're going to take this 2. We're going to copy this and move it to our operand stack. And whenever we move something to our operand stack we need to adjust the stack pointer. So we're done with that. Now we're going to compare two values that are on the operand stack and if one is greater than the other we're going to terminate. Not really terminate, but we're going to jump to 19 which is basically ending our method. So this kind of uh, branch corresponds to this condition here in the source code. We check whether we're already already reached n and if we have then we jump out. So we're looking at whether 1 is greater than 2. Is 1 greater than 2? No. That means this instruction consumed those two values and falls through. There's no branching because it was false. Next instruction is I load 1, so we load from local variable table whatever is at offset 1 and we need to adjust the stack pointer, now there's something on the stack. I load 2, so we load from slot 2 
Just move this a little bit. Oops. Destroying my beautiful diagram here. And adjust the stack pointer. And we're done with that. And now we can finally do the addition. So this is basically sum plus equals i. Okay, sum equals sum plus i. So we add the value of sum to the value of i. The value of sum is 0. The value of i is 1. What happens if we add 0 and 1? We get 1. So we need to remove this. Remove this. Adjust the stack pointer. And put the result, which happens to be also 1, in here. So that's i add. Now we store this result in local variable 1. So that probably will be sum, right? We're storing the result of adding sum plus i in sum. So we take this one here and we move it in local variable 1. Okay, there was a 0 previously. This goes away and is overwritten with our little 1. And we need to adjust the stack pointer. Stack is empty. And we move to the next instruction. This instruction is i inc 2,1. So this corresponds to i++ here. So it's incrementing an integer variable, namely integer variable number 2, by 1. It adds 1 to this variable number 2. Variable number 2 is here. Currently it contains the value 1, so we need to replace that with the value 2. So this is a kind of, as I mentioned in the previous video, a complex instruction set instruction because it's not actually loading it here, then doing an add and pushing it back, but it's doing it kind of in a really complicated or well direct way. Okay, so we've done that. We've incremented our local variable, our loop counter. We can go to the next instruction. The next instruction says go to 4. So there's no modification of our operand stack, no modification of the local variable table. We just jump unconditionally to bytecode instruction 4. So now we're going to i load from 2 again. So we've done that previously. Remember we did i store 2 and immediately i load 2 and that was kind of pointless. I push it there and take it back. But it's not really because now we're going to load it again. We're going to do this i load 2 over and over and over every time we go through the loop. So let's load this. So we have our two here. We copy it and we move it over on our stack. Adjust the stack pointer. And done we are with this instruction. We load from variable number zero. Copy this value. Move it over. Adjust the stack pointer. And now we have two values on the stack and we can compare them and branch accordingly. If one is greater than the other, well, actually both are the same. So we're not going to jump. So this instruction is consuming those values. Stack is empty and we didn't jump. I load one, so we take whatever is in slot one, create a copy of that value, move it into the stack. Stack pointer gets adjusted. We move to the next index, I load 2. So we take what's at index 2, copy that, take it on the operand stack, push up the stack pointer. Now another addition. So we add 2 plus 1. If you add 2 plus 1, you get 3. So the result of adding will be putting a 3 in here. We're done with the i add instruction. Now we say i store 1. So we store this result in local variable 1. So let's take this 3 and put it where there is this guy here. Get rid of this. And move it over here. And the stack is now empty. Then we go to the next instruction. 
i inc 2 comma 1 so increment what's at 2 so 2 incremented is 3 write the value 3 in here we're done with incrementing we go to the next instruction go to 4 nothing to do just jump to 4 here we are I load from address 2 so address 2 copy this value onto the stack I load from address 0 address 0 copy the value onto the stack and now we do another comparison here it's the third time we run through this comparison and now we say is 3 greater than 2 and yet this time for the first time we have to say yes so these are consumed we said yes and because we said yes we have to now branch conditional branch we have to branch to address 19 address 19 is here what do we do I load 1 so whatever is in address 1 is copied is moved onto the operand stack stack pointer is moving up and we're done with I load 1 and now we go to the last instruction here I return so we return an integer value, namely the value 3. That's return sum. So if you look at this code here, it should actually add 2 plus 1 or 1 plus 2. So the result really should be 3 and it is. So if we now execute this instruction, we can basically take the stack pointer down and done we are. Okay, so that was executing this method given the input or the argument, actual argument 2.